Hi, my name's Aaron Curry, and in this video, I'm going to tell you about a high demand and low competition opportunity to make £25,000 profit from just one house, year after year after year, starting with none of your own money, and how you can manage it with only five minutes a week of your time. Now, I know that that sounds unbelievable, and I know that that sounds too good to be true. Okay, and that's exactly what it felt like to me when I stumbled upon this strategy and almost became an accidental landlord of this strategy back in 2015. But what happened next exceeded all of my property expectations. And as a 20 year property veteran with over 200 properties, I didn't think that anything could surprise me anymore. And this shocked me because of the huge profits with virtually no work. The results were so good that I did some digging to find out if this was a fluke or if I should start buying more of these high cash flow houses. And what I discovered is a booming trend, a trend that's booming more and more and more every day, every month, every year. And right now you can jump on this booming trend where there's virtually no competition. This is your chance to step into the DeLorean and go back and buy Apple stocks in 1980. If you're a film connoisseur, the DeLorean takes you back in time. You could buy those Apple stocks in 1980 before Apple was massive. This is the same. The strategy is the same. We can get in before it's massive. Just think how that would transform the quality of your life. What I'm going to share with you today is that powerful. Today's video is the third in a four-part series. In the first video, I revealed the little known property trend that replaces your salary with just that one house. And in the second video, I showed you how I turned a rundown B&B &B into a holiday let that put £25,000 a year in my pocket with only five minutes a week of my time. And I showed you the simple three-step system and the four people that make this possible. If you haven't seen either of those videos yet, then stop this video right now and click the link to the right of this video to watch them right now. Go watch video one and video two and then come back here, okay? In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to find the perfect holiday let property. This is the most important step. After all, if you buy a house in the wrong area, then the best booking company in the world is still going to struggle to fill it. But if you get this part right, you can literally sit back and watch the money roll in. So before we go any further, I'd just like to explain why the video quality is not what I'd want it to be. You know, we're starting to come out of lockdown now, which is great, but we still need to keep our distance from each other. So I'm not able to get face to face with my videographer just yet. So it's literally just me with my spaceship headphones on, sat with my webcam, speaking direct to the webcam to you. So if you want to know about a high demand and low competition opportunity to make £25,000 a year profit from just one property, starting with none of your money, and how you can manage it with just five minutes a week of your time, and the information to you is more important than the video quality, then you're going to love this four-part video series. I've got three holiday let properties in my portfolio. They net me net profit about £80,000 a year, all across the three all follow my sleeps 16 model. So they hit the income sweet spot and they're the perfect property for the booming multi-generational holiday trend that we talked about in video one. This is what makes them a low risk, high profit and virtually zero time investment strategy. I love that, low risk, high profit, zero, virtually zero time investment strategy. Of the three holiday debt properties, Two of them were my dream homes that I bought for a different reason. I bought them, dream home number one and dream home number two, because they were my dream homes. These are wonderful houses, but they're not perfect for investment properties because they were more expensive. Okay, You can get a much better return on investment or return on capital if you buy a property in the way that I'm going to show you today. And I'll explain that a bit later on. The third holiday let in my portfolio fits my model perfectly. You see, it was a rundown B&B, &B, so I picked it up cheap. Well, why is that important? Because it costs less to get started. And it gives me a better return on capital. The money I put on into the deal is my capital. And what I'm always measuring with any investment is the return I'm going to get on the money that I need to invest. 
okay? By the way, if you're using somebody else's money, the return's infinite, isn't it? Because you've not put any money in, okay? Again, we'll come back to that in, 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 in a later video in this series. So, but that was really important to me. So I picked up this cheap B&B. Now, in a moment, I'm going to walk you through my process to find the perfect B&B property or the perfect property for you. It doesn't have to be a B&B already. Okay, it can be any property, but I'll walk you through that, that process. But first, let me show you the three ways that property puts money in your pocket, because most people don't get this. There's three ways that property puts money in your pocket and why you should focus on return on capital as well as focusing on cash flow. Now, the most obvious way that any property puts money in your pocket, whichever strategy it is, is cash flow. And holiday lets do that perfectly. Let's face it, £25,000 from one house is amazing. Okay? So there's a big tick in the cash flow box. The second way that a house puts money in your pocket is refinance. Okay? And when I say refinance, I'm talking about buying at discount and being able to refinance and take that discount back out. So you could call it refinance, you could call it discount. So the rundown B&B that I bought was converted into an HMO. I told you that story in video two. The conversion cost about £30,000. But once the work was complete, I got a mortgage for the property and that was enough to get me all of my money back out and to be able to pay, pay the owners for the property, but pay back my JV partner. So once I got a mortgage, I literally paid everybody off. The property put money in my pocket, which I used to pay the people back that I borrowed the money from. If you used your own savings to buy this house, in that example, it would have given you the money back to put back in your savings account. Okay, So I couldn't have done that if I'd not bought at a cheaper price. Later, when I converted the same HMO into a holiday let, I needed £50,000 for the re renovation. Again, I used somebody else's money to do the work. And once the work was complete, I remortgaged the property and I could pay back my finance partner. So refinance is a critical way that property puts money in your pocket. We've got cash flow and we've got the refinance. The final way that property puts money in your pocket is market growth. Property goes up in value over time. On average, over the last 90 years, goes up at 7.9% a year. That includes all the drops, the downturns, the falls, as well as the ups. On average, 7.9% a year. Now, if you've got a buy-to-let property worth 100K, and over a year or two, it goes up, let's say, 10%, your asset has increased in value by £10,000. But if you've got a holiday let that's worth £300,000 and the market rises 10%, your asset increases in value by £30,000. The market's risen the same amount, just 10%, over a year, two, whatever it takes. But you've made, with a bigger property, you've got a much bigger increase in value, 30000 instead of 10000 Now, you might say, well, that's paper value. You know, I can't eat equity. Can't feed myself with that today. But you can. You can. Thanks to refinancing, you can withdraw most of that equity out and use it. Okay? So you want to buy your properties in area areas where you're going to get capital growth because over time, that will double the amount of money that you will put into your pocket. Okay? So those three things are all important. How do you get the right property in the right area at the right price so you can enjoy great cash flow and good capital growth? The simple answer is that you buy a property to meet all of my rules. The rules that I'm going to walk you through in just a moment. If you fail to meet the rules, it won't give you all of that. If you meet the rules, it will give you all of that. It is as simple as that. Now, I want to get your imagination racing, okay? So let's start with a little piece of it. You want to buy in an area that will attract walkers, okay? You want to buy in an area that will attract cyclists. People go away for the weekend, don't they? They go away for the week in the UK. They want to go walking. They want to go cycling. They like to stay probably in the countryside, but be able to visit a big city. Is there a big city close by so they can spend a day out in the big city but not have to stay in the big city? They like to go to the seaside, don't they? We, we love in the UK a good seaside holiday, okay? Now, you don't want to buy in beauty spots like Cornwall or the Lake District. 
those areas won't work. And people say, well, why won't they work? You know, they, they tick all those boxes, walkers, cyclists, seaside, maybe not big city, but they tick loads of boxes. Arid, in fact, people go on holiday there all the time. Yes, they do. But the return on investment, the return on the capital you'll put in is not good. You're going to pay over the odds because everybody wants a house there. So the prices are too expensive for the return that you'll get. So those areas don't work. But if, for example, just for example, you bought in a seaside town that's past its glory days, you know, 100 years ago, everybody went there, but now it's a bit past its glory days, then you'll easily find a rundown B&B &B with a tired owner that's desperate to sell, for example. So what seaside towns are near you? What areas do you know and love? Where do you like going if you go to the seaside? Have you got a picture of those in your mind? Now, are they near any big towns? Or if seaside's not your thing, you know, if you like walking or cycling, what walking or cycling areas are near you? You know, North Wales would be an amazing area to buy in because you've got seaside, countryside and hills. You know, that's just one area I thought of because I'm taking my whole family on holiday there this year. Just like you, our holiday plans have all been kicked to the curb because of coronavirus but we still want to go away. We still want to spend family time together somewhere else. So we're looking for somewhere in the UK that's beautiful and it's got things for all of us to do. So that's just an example. North Wales is just an example, okay? But there's so many examples. So if you've got an idea, just an idea of an area near you or an area, you know, my, my, my holiday, that's two and a half hours away from me. So an area near you or an area you'd really like to have one. If you've got an idea of one, if not, maybe pause and just jot down a couple of ideas, okay? Pause the video and do that. But if you've got an idea, then I'll walk you through my golden rules to buy world-class holiday lens. Because then you can check off this area and you can check off the properties in this area against the golden rules that I'm going to share with you. Okay, so here we go. So these golden rules are all part of what I call my safe, secure portfolio plan. When I'm teaching people how to invest in property, there's 10 key areas that you need to master to successfully invest in property. And the golden rules are all part of, you can see here at the top right, the simple selection system, part of the plan to make sure you only buy world-class properties, okay? So let's look at each of what I call my six C's for holiday lets, six C's. And I'm going to walk you through each of the C's and give you some background to each one, okay? Now, by the way, let's be clear. If your property fails just one of these six C's, you reject it. Just one. I don't care if it meets all the other five perfectly. If it fails the sixth, walk away. Why? Because in another town or city or another area of countryside or on another street, you'll find one that meets all six. So why would you accept second best? You're going to own this property. This property is going to look after you. It's probably going to allow you to quit your job and you're going to be able to live off it if you get the right one. So why would you risk it by missing any of the C's? So it needs to meet all six of the C's. Now, the first C is C for capacity. Capacity, what do I mean by capacity? Well, the income sweet spot for holiday lets is sleep 16 to 18 type properties, okay? These are large properties. I covered this trend in video number one, but these are large properties, seven or eight bedroom properties that you can get multi-generational uh, families in there. So grandparents with their kids and with the kids, kids all going away together. You can get four families, you know, four best friends and their partners um, and, and their kids, and they can all go away and stay in these properties together. You know, that's another massive market for this kind of property. Or you can get eight friends who all want their own room. Okay. So seven or eight bed property. Now that size property is going to need two large lounges. 16 people need to be able to sit in the lounge. That size property is going to need a large dining area. You know, in, in the dining room, we need to be able to seat 16 people. If, you, if it's 18, it needs to be able to seat 18 people. So the property needs to be big enough for all of this. And of course, if you've got 16 people staying there, you need a minimum of three bathrooms. It's three or four bathrooms. You know, separate toilets are great on top of that. If someone's in the shower for an hour, someone else needs the toilet, okay? So, um, so these, these are big properties and you need to make sure that it is a large property like this so it facilitates all those things that I've just said. So that's C for capacity. What's the next C that you need to take, make sure is in place? The next C is C for city. 
okay it needs to be a location where people want to go on holiday and we've kind of started to touch on this you know it could be the seaside it could be the countryside it could be the forest area you know what are one of the largest uh, uk holiday break companies in the uk center parks center parks you know four or five locations in the uk i can't remember how many it is now but they have midweek bookings they have weekend bookings they're run where are they in the middle of a forest in the middle of people love to be near the forest they love to go cycling in the forest mountain biking in the forest walking in the forest people love to be in the countryside for the same reason if on top of all of that they can have a day out to a town or a city they love that but they don't want to be in the town or city all the time unless they're going on a city break to london that's a totally different strategy but for these types of holidays, these types of groups that want to spend their time together, or if they go out for a walk, they then come back to the family unit and spend time with family or friends. You know, these are the kind of places they want to go. Or they want to go to the seaside. They want to reminisce. The grandparents used to take the kids on holiday. They've not been back to the seaside together for 20 or 30 years, and now they just have the most magical time. Okay? So you need it to be in the right location. You need to be hitting at least one of those points if you can hit two or three at the same time you know that's why i mentioned north wales for example um, north yorkshire works really well uh, we have ours in scarborough because we've got you know one of my properties the lodge we're nine miles from the seaside we're nine miles from the forest and we're in the countryside you know, it just ticks so many boxes we get walkers we get cyclists we get people that just want to go to the seaside we want people that just want to chill in the country okay now to make sure that your property is going to rent well, to make sure it's going to rent well, the beauty of the holiday lets, totally different to um, kind of buy to let strategy, is you can see other people's properties and how well they're booking up. You can go on the booking sites and you can pretend you're going to go on holiday in this place. And when you're going to go on holiday, you do a search and you see what's available. Okay. And what you do is you start by doing a search that's 12 months out. So I'm going on holiday in 12 months time and I do a search for sleep 16 in the area that I'm thinking of and I see how many properties come up. Okay. And within three miles of my search area, I want there to be at least a few properties coming up. I'll cover that in a moment. Okay. So when those few properties come up, then I look backwards to today and I check if there's at least 20 weeks in the next year that are grayed out 20 weeks that are not available because somebody else has booked them on all the properties. If I had, if I found six properties in the area of that size and ilk and similar to what I was thinking of getting and three of them have 25 weeks booked out, but the other three only have 10 weeks, I'm walking away. There isn't a good strong demand for property in this area. Okay. It's oversubscribed. There's too many landlords, too many people offering properties. But if I can look at all six of those properties have at least 20 weeks of forward booking, guess what? The space for a seventh, probably for an eighth and a ninth. And I can come into that space and I'll also get all of those bookings. I'll also end up with 44, 50, 51 weeks of bookings like I get on my properties. So this check is absolutely crucial to make sure you buy in the right place. Okay. What's the next thing you need to do? Well, you want your properties to have great capital growth. Okay. Now, the UK national average over the last 90 years is that on average, prices go up at 7.9% per annum on average. Okay. That includes all the up times, the peaks, the falls, the troughs. It includes all the different periods, all the different time frames. Okay. Any crashes are included in that. Still on average, it's 7.9. So as long as you get the national average, you're in a pretty cool place. Okay. National average is great. So we want to try and get the national average. Okay. Now, I teach in buy to lets when I teach the six C's to therefore buy in towns and cities because towns and cities are more likely to get the national average. But here we might be going to the seaside. We might be going in the countryside, etc. What's the reason we don't buy buy to lets in the countryside? Because we're scared of the local factory shutting down. A hundred people lose their jobs and that affects the house prices in that area. Well, we need to buy our holiday lets in, in countryside, etc. We need to not be fearful of that. But how do we minimize the risk from a capital growth point of view? Because as long as we get that national average, we're going to be very, very happy. So what we do is we check if we're going to buy in a village or something that's not a town or a city, we check that there's no local trade in that town or city that employs a lot of people. I'm talking about a factory that employs 100 people in the village. Because if the factory shuts down and those 100 people lose their job, microeconomics kicks in and the house prices might not go up for the next 10 years. Okay, but as long as I buy in a village that doesn't have something like that, which most villages don't, 
then I'm cool. This is okay. My holiday let is going to go up in value in line with the national average. Because the national average, by the way, goes up right across the UK. People think it goes up more in the south. Or it's just because the houses are worth more. So the numbers sound bigger. But over time, they go up the same whichever area you're in. Whether you're in London, Birmingham or Newcastle, if you've got a million pound of property and it doubles in London, it's going to double in Birmingham, it's going to double in Newcastle. It just starts three years later in Birmingham, five years later in Newcastle, for example. So wherever you are, you'll get that national average, but just make sure there's no local trade employing a lot of people if you are in a village environment. So that's the first three C's. Remember, it's got to meet all six. What's the fourth C? Well, the fourth C is cash flow. Cash flow. Now, this is an interesting piece. The target here is to have a minimum of 18% return on capital employed. And I'm going to show you an example in just a moment to walk you through what I mean by that, because you may not have heard that phrase before. Capital, is, capital employed is how much money you've had to put into the deal to get the deal. And you'll have had to put some money in to buy it, and you'll have had to put some money in to refurbish anything that needs doing, and you'll have had to furnish the property. So our money's gone into the deal. What's our return that we're getting based on how much money we put into the deal? Now, in video four, I'll teach you I'll teach you how to make sure it's not your money. <laughs> so it's an infinite return on capital employed because somebody else's money has gone in the deal, okay? But even if it's someone else's money, you want to buy the best cash flowing properties. So I still want you to do this equation and make sure you're getting a minimum of 18% return on capital. That's like if I put 100 grand in, I'm getting at least 18,000 back out, okay? Show me other property strategies where you can do that and just spend five minutes a week responding to a couple of WhatsApp messages and get those kind of returns, okay? And have asset growth and have refinance growth. Now, as you refinance, you take some of that capital back out and you either pay yourself back or the JV partner back. Of course, that's then more money to buy some more. You're going to go, you're probably going to go repeat this because it works so well, okay? But when you take that money back out, if I put 100,000 in to start with, but I get 30,000 back out, my capital employed now is only 70,000 because I've got 30 back, okay? But I'm still getting the 18,000 coming in, so suddenly my return on capital employed has gone up. So as soon as you're able to refinance, get money out, that, that number goes up. So it needs to be a minimum of 18% return on capital employed at the point of purchase, at the beginning of the plan. Okay, and you need to plan on your cash flow for cleaning, laundry, maintenance, mortgage, insurance, and booking costs. And I've gone through that quite quickly, but let me just let me throw up in front of you a slide where I take you through some numbers. Okay, these are the average numbers, it's not an exact science, but these are the average numbers on one of my properties. Okay, so the projected annual rental income is 90,000 pounds. Okay, now my booking agent takes a chunk. Okay. They do take a chunk, but they fill my property. They bring me the £90,000, so I don't mind giving them the chunk. In this example, just under £20,000, £19,400 is what goes to the booking agent, okay? But they're getting me the 90000 so that leaves me with a net 70, okay? Then I've got maintenance, okay? On average, £500 a month for a property this size, so £6,000 a year. I've got my cleaners doing 16 hours, you know, uh, on average. Each turnaround is 16 hours, 12 pounds an hour, 48 weeks of the year. You know, it's a bit more than that now. 9,200, okay? Laundry, I've put in at 80 pounds a week. You're laundering the bedding for 16 people each week. Times 48 weeks, you've got 3,840, okay? Now, we've got our mortgage payment. Now, on the mortgage, I've assumed it's interest only, and I've assumed the interest I'm paying is at 5% because I want to risk plan here. I'm actually paying around 3%, okay? But let's assume it's 5% to be, to be risk averse. What if the rates go up a couple of percent? Let's protect ourselves. So here, the mortgage is going to cost me £11,250 a year. Okay, I pay it monthly, just like any normal mortgage. It's on interest only, and that's my mortgage on a £225,000 mortgage. I've got my utilities to pay. You know, I might have some rates to pay. I might have some gas, some electric, some water. Again, I can teach you how to not have to pay the rates in most instances these days. But let's say that's 600 a month, so that's 7,200. We've got miscellaneous bits and pieces. We're going to have to pick up 3,000 pounds. Gardener at this particular property, you might have a property with a garden, you might not, but I've got 1,000 pounds in for that. So when you take away all the costs, you've got your income coming in and you take away all of the costs. In this example, we've got 29,000 pounds of profit. 
net profit left in the bank after all the costs, okay? And it says there the net margin, I don't want you to confuse these points, net margin 32.3%. That's 29,000 divided by the revenue of 90,000. We're getting to keep 32% of all the bookings. You know, of all the booking income, 32% is, 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 is in our back pockets, okay? Now, let's come on to capital invested. So let's say for this particular property, we put down a £75,000 deposit, we spent 10000 refurbishing the property, and we spent 30000 refurbishing it, uh, furnishing it, sorry. So putting beds in, hot tubs, the bedding for, for 16 people to sleep, three lots of bedding, putting nice sofas in, putting in tables and chairs and all of that kind of thing. And I'm going to say, you know, stamp duty, everything else costs us about 10000 So in this example... It's 125,000 that's gone into the deal. Okay, you can get these deals where it's 100 grand, 120, 80 grand, depends what you're looking at. Okay, so, but that's what's gone into the deal. And remember in video four, I'll show you how to get someone else to pay for all of that. So you don't have to. So into this deal went 125,000 pounds, but it's making me 29,000 pounds a year of net profit. So my return on capital invested is where you divide the 29,000 by the 125,000. So in this example, it's 23.3% return on capital invested. The minimum is 18. So this passes. This is a big tick. You say, great, buy the property. Let's go ahead from a cash flow perspective. It's got to meet all the other C's as well, but we go ahead on that basis. If that number was less than 18, even if it was 17.9, you don't go and fiddle with the numbers and change the numbers. You go, right, the numbers were the numbers. I'm walking away. Because in the next town or city or the next place, there'll be an even better property that meets this rule as well as the other rules. So it needs to meet that fourth C, that C for cash flow. And that's where you put the math in and do that. I have a far more detailed deal analyzer. Okay, so all of my students that I work with have got a deal analyzer that literally you can put the numbers in and it shows you within five minutes, it's either a yes or a no. It's a green or a red traffic light system, okay? And that's just a great way to quickly check a property and know what you're doing, okay? So what's the fifth C? The fifth C is C for check, C for check, okay? We've kind of covered this already. You want 20 weeks at least of future bookings on the other properties that are in the area within three miles of your holiday let sites. So you go to book as if it's for you, as I said, you see what comes up. You look for a year's time to make the reason you're looking for a year's time is to make sure all the properties come up in the area of your size. And then you look back and you look for from now, is there at least 20 weeks of future bookings in there? If there isn't, walk away, choose a new area, go somewhere else, choose a new area because you've not got the demand that I want you to have. You've not got the demand you need to have to make sure you maximize the potential of this strategy. The final C, the sixth C is C for contingency, okay? I, you know, if you've been following me for a while, and if you haven't, I'm a safe, secure person. I like to make my things as risk-free as possible. The final C, C for contingency. You know, if I'm putting all my eggs into this basket, or I'm putting this lump of money into this basket, okay? What do I want to do to protect myself? Well, I want to know that if anything goes wrong, it's never going to affect me and my family. I'm never going to need to put extra money in. I don't want it to be Christmas. I'm supposed to be treating the kids and suddenly I have to put some money back in the pot to, to, to look after the investment. That's the quickest way to fall out at home and that's the quickest way for the strategy and the plan to finish. I guarantee you, okay? So let's have a contingency. Now, in the summer months and over Christmas and New Year, the amount of money hitting your bank account is unbelievable. It's phenomenal. You know, it just blew my brains when all this money's coming in. You're renting weeks for three and a half thousand, four thousand pounds a week to stay in this Sleep 16 property, okay? That would rent out as a buy to let for maybe 1250 or 1500 at a push, or maybe even a thousand per month. And you're getting three and a half, four thousand for a week from the property, okay? But the winter months, you're getting less. You know, the winter months, you might be getting 1,300, 1,400, 1,500 a week. And then you've got your costs going out, okay? So I like to have a contingency that sees me through those winter months just in case. I've never needed to use it, but I recommend you carry it. So with one holiday net, my recommendation is 10,000 pounds in that safety net, okay? Now, by the way, as soon as you advertise it, you'll take some booking. So that will help you build your safety net straight away anyway. And as you buy further properties, you might be able to drop this to maybe 5,000 for each extra property, just sat in that contingent pot to protect the investment. 
And if you're going to use somebody else's money, just factor that in, make sure they give you that as well. <laughs> so then the investment's protected and you share with them about contingency. It gives them a lot of peace of mind. Okay. And if you're going to use your own money, that's cool. But don't you want lots? <laughs> don't you want lots? So learn to do it for yourself, but learn to use other people's money too. Okay. So they are my six C's. You need to make sure that every single property you invest with, with Holly Let, meets those six C's. But it's also as simple as that. You literally check the property. Does it meet the six C's? Yes. Does it meet every single one? Yes. Great. I can buy that. It works. If the answer is no, don't touch it with a barge pole. Don't go near it. So now you've got the top line of the areas that will work for holiday lets. You've now got the detailed checklist to decide if a rundown B&B in that area is worth buying or a house in that area is worth buying. It doesn't have to be rundown, by the way, and it doesn't have to be a BB and b to decide if a house in that area is worth buying. So now what I'd like you to do is make a list of the areas around you. The areas that you know will be perfect for holidays. You know they're the kind of places that you would want to go on holiday. You know, and it's okay if you want to stay there. In the final video of this series, I'm going to show you how to build a holiday let portfolio, portfolio, a few of these, with none of your own money. Plus, I'll show you how a chance conversation and a travel brochure banked rolled 12 houses. Until then, look after yourself, look after the people you love, invest with knowledge, invest with confidence, create financial freedom, and I'll see you really, really soon. Look out for the final video in this series, just a couple of days time. I'll see you very soon. Thank you.